Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board meeting Sorry. Uh, and Board of Health meeting, August 3rd, 2022. It's uh, 6 p.m. This meeting is a hybrid uh, meeting with Zoom and the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. <laughs> Please note that while an option uh, for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless um, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus, versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the South Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation um, information located on our agenda, which you can find on the town of Deerfield's website. If you go to the calendar, there'll be a link uh, to the agenda and also a link right there to the Zoom meeting. So you can click on the Zoom. There's also um, a toll-free number if people want to um, join by phone. It's 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Uh, meeting attendees should mute their phones, uh, star six for landlines until asking questions or commenting. All, attend all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. State your name and where you're from, if you'd like to speak. And so we'll call the meeting to order. We have a uh, public comment on our agenda always, generally always. Uh, so if anyone has any public comment, we'll take that. And if not, we'll get into our meeting. No public comment at the moment. So, um, we have no hearings. Our appearances are uh, emergency management discussion with Chief Pachurik and uh, Chief Smith, Lori McComb. We're all here together to kind of start talking about and re-energizing re our uh, emergency management. Um, so, John, you, wanna... you need to come up. Yeah, come yeah. on up, John. Join you us. You're not an attendee. You're, yeah. you're a participant. So I'm all <laughs> up in the hot seat. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, thank you, uh, John and uh, Tim and Trevor and Casey for coming. Um, this is to, we, we need to talk about rebuilding capacity for all, all emergencies. We've been um, sidetracked with COVID for the last two years and we haven't updated a lot of our plans and we haven't updated um, um, getting together and communicating, both communicating amongst ourselves. And we started out really good, I think, based on our team uh, when, when COVID started. But as COVID continued for the last two years, it's been really tough. Um, we're, not, we're not getting together, we're not communicating as much. Um, there's not a reason to get together. So. I hoped by having our meeting, we need to get Tim up to speed. We need to get him on the Han tonight, at least. Yep. And, then, uh, and then we need to uh, make sure that he is aware of how to get on the DPH web EOC, and then also um, MEMA uh, EOC. Um, we also need to make sure that we're all cross, we have to set up some kind of plan to get us all cross trained on RAVE. We haven't you know, we haven't done that. Everybody's been so busy and that really should be done. Um, I wanna make sure that we set up quarterly meetings, get it in our books. So we will intend to up, you know, come together at least <clears throat> three or four times a year. And then um, we can talk about how we wanna update these plans. Um, I was very discouraged when I went to um, the drill um, the dam failure drill was passed in, I don't even know when it was, in July, I guess. And I, I was the only one from Franklin County at that drill. And, and, and we haven't had a drill for, I don't know, it's been four years. Mm -hmm. 
So, and the only time that they do drills is for relicensing and their minimum requirement. So I don't, you know, this is, this is a, um, some action plans from, but they're 2018. And I think we need to go over them. Um, I, Casey forwarded us the old Deerfield evacuation plan. I'm gonna forward it to Matt to make sure that he has a copy, um, the CFO at, um, at Deerfield, and then have him be responsible for updating it um, and getting back to us for our next meeting. I think that's pretty important uh, to make sure. Mm -hmm. This is a triple dip La Nina year, according to NOAA. So we're going to have more Atlantic storms. And I guess that's why I feel really stressed that we need to be updating in case we have a hurricane come through. We haven't had too much luck, stuff yeah. in the last decade. Right. So um, it's been 11 years since Irene. We've had intense events like last July, but it truly have not been triggering for us. So I'm worried we're about to do, to do something else. So yeah. um, I just feel like we need to get back in and, and, and reunification. I know John has some plans for the reunification, but you know, that's something that was really disturbing to me when I went to the training um, about uh, what happened at Sandy Hook and how that reunification was actually not good. And, and you never know why we would have to do worry about that. But I think it can it's, happen anywhere. it can happen anywhere and we need to be able to handle it in a um, effective, empathetic, thoughtful way. And I know that we need more, we need more training. So yeah, I, I had talked to John a little bit um, about some of the basics. So have you thought about it some more, John, about what you were thinking of updating <clears throat> or what you think is important for us? I, I think the first thing is, uh, is what you said is capacity building. We've got to start with our quarterly meetings. We've got to get the group back together with the fire chief, CMS director and get everybody back on board with the nonprofits. Um, I know when I first started here, there was a possibility of a hurricane coming up and we put everybody together right away. So right. that's kind of how I started my tenure yeah. 10 years ago. Right. And um, I think it's good to get those quarterly meetings back up and running. But uh, Lori did a lot of good with this program in the last mm -hmm. few years, and we're just going to continue to build on it from this point forward. So um, my biggest thing from you guys tonight was just understanding where you want to go with the program what your goals and objectives are. So I can kind of go through a checklist and make sure we achieve them over mm -hmm. the next year. That's, that's the big thing. So with EMS, it is not, or not EMS, EMD. Sorry, there's so yep. much on my brain. With emergency management, nobody can be a master of all traits. Right. We can put anything we want in writing. We can come up with a, a master list. But at the end of the day, what I've learned over the years of an emergency management director is all about having contacts, facilitated relationships. So when something happens, you have access to the correct answers and protocols. Even if you steal them from another community at hour 23 and a half, perfectly fine. Whoever has the best robust program is who we wanna jump on. So to me, it's all about building relationships. It's not about coming up with six inch manuals that are gonna sit in shelves right. and every year we've gotta right. update them and people can't memorize them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go through what you, the select board does, or I have on my desk or Casey has on her desk. It's, it's ungodly these days. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, the mm -hmm. biggest part of this is those facilitated relationships and capacity building. We've got to get people back together and get those relationships back that we always had. Yeah. That's, that's my separate. first focus. We've been separate for yeah. months and months, well, <laughs> right. years now. Well, I, under, I understand. I mean, I certainly know that plans sit on the shelf, but I think the cheat sheets to the plans mm -hmm. have to be updated because mm -hmm. that's how I operate is with a cheat sheet. So I can get my brain going and I know where to go, the resources. Agree. So <clears throat> I think our cheat sheets be very helpful, especially for Tim, because he's brand new. And that, that is a clear way to get your brain thinking. I, I really want to make sure our, our spontaneous volunteer management plan, which I know it, it seems like, it would be a relatively straightforward thing, but it is really, the, there is a template here from Homeland Security and right. it is really, really good. 
Managing and, volunteers and can so if be you very have, hard. If you have a long yeah. event, that's what you need to do is be able to manage your volunteers. And you have to have a core group of volunteers that can manage the volunteers that are spontaneous. Mm -hmm. And we have to have a way to identify them and qualify and do training so we have a core group. And I, and I, uh, I know Alex through that NATO grant is supposed to be updating our volunteer list. We have about 140 volunteers <clears throat> through, the, through the EDS, but because of the way the COVID clinics have been running, we've only been using roughly 30, 40 of them at a time, you know, mm -hmm. and even though I've made some effort to expand it out, it's, it's so much easier to have already trained people to come. And so you're not, we're not utilizing our core group and our core group is falling apart and they're getting older. So we need to go through and make sure we try to get some, recruit some younger people to have more stamina for, you know, doing more things. One of the things I'm pushing on the county level is to do our cert training again, which is, you know, sort of like your MRC training, but get back our ICS training. I mean, I've had ICS through 400. Mm -hmm. I feel I I think only did we, 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 that, am I ever going to run a major event? <laughs> no, right. but it is very helpful to understand what happens in the major event and what resources are pulled in, in a major event to help whoever is running the major event that you, is happening. You know what the, what the blueprint looks like, what right. people are doing, right. who to report to. Right. I've been watching so, a lot of, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no. So, so the ICS thing is really important. It's, we, we used to do that training every other year. And mm -hmm. because of COVID, we haven't done any training since 19, you know, 2019. So we need to do that something again, because mm -hmm. it's not the same to take it online. Um, you can, I think you can do ICS 100 and you can, can you do 200 online? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, can do that. Yeah, I think that's <clears throat> online, but 300 and 400 are still in person, but I have to say, there's no reason for more than us to have the 400 level, but our core group should have in-person training for the, you know, the ICS 100 and 200, because it's the stories that John Taylor, who's mm -hmm. you know the fire chief up in Shelburne, who is usually volunteers to do our training, um, it's his stories of how it works, and it gets incentives for people to how they understand how the chain of command works. Right. And we always do ICS in our EDS so we can practice. There is some practice. Yep. Acronyms. Yep. Oh, please. Incident command system. It's, ICS is it's incident the, command. Yeah. I'm sorry. There are so many things, Tim. I've been and, watching. Um, I just get hooked on YouTube a bit. I've been watching a lot of the wildfire uh, <laughs> in the West right now on YouTube. And there's some good documentaries about kind of the response to them. And they obviously everybody uses um, the incident command mm -hmm. system. And so it's interesting to watch. It doesn't matter where you are in the country. If you know incident command, you can go in and help or or, you know, it's the same structure mm -hmm. everywhere. So, it, so you, you know, if you can, if you get trained on it, it's not a massive training, but it's just enough for people to get briefly aware of it. How do you, how do you control when, when all of, when that, when that child went missing in, in Conway, Thanksgiving, a few, well, five years, six years ago now, there were volunteers from across the state looking for him. And you know, it's rough terrain and anybody and their brother is going, oh, I'm going to go help and run out where when the most help that was needed was like cooking some grilled cheese and stuff for the guys that are out there in the woods. So when they come back, they've got food and the changes and just so there's just ways to managing, those managing volunteers. the volunteers so that you're not out hunting for somebody else who gets hurt because they're out looking and trying to help and they get lost in the woods and so all of that stuff is super important to do. And I, I, I agree, we have not, because of COVID, it's been all consuming. We haven't done any of that get together. And even if it's 20 people or 15 to get together to just have that core group when it's something goes wrong, obviously police, fire, EMS is first on scene and sets up, but there, there will be need for help when we have a massive disaster and we, you know, it can happen anytime, anywhere, so. I don't worry about the single disaster in Deerfield because there's resources out there, right. whether it's state police, whether it's MEMA or the governor declaring a local emergency in Deerfield, 
Yeah. I worry about the large scale events where Carolyn's talking about a hurricane right. or a tornado rolls through 17 towns. Mm -hmm. Now those resources aren't available to just Deerfield. Right. And we have to manage our own event or we get a massive flooding event on the Deerfield River that cuts off communities. Right. That's a whole or different ice world. storm. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> so I'm, those I'm, are the ones that concern me because you're not going to get the resources. Right. There's, you know, there's, um, there's a runaway suicidal uh, person in Sunderland right now they're looking for. There mm -hmm. are vast resources going in there. Right. Singular events are not a concern to me. Right. Large scale are always a concern. And that's where it comes to capacity building. Yeah. You know, people often tease me. Oh my God, you guys got like four or five marked cruisers. I yeah. said, yes, I know. They don't understand how quick those cars go when you get any flooding event and you put yeah. one in West Deerfield, East Deerfield, Blocking three on River Road, Road yeah. one in South Deerfield in a street, and then two still even covering a call. Right, right. Absolutely. Still, yeah, I mean, they're happens. both right now serving restraining orders. So yeah. they go literally like that when it comes to capacity building. Right. And that's where it, it goes to public education as well. We want the community to understand what we do and why we do it. No part of it is any, any part of power or struggle or anything like that. It's about building capacity. So when an yeah. event happens, yes. Yeah. And then we have to look at our, what I also wanted us to do is just think about, we can decide the next, because I, I don't really feel like sheltering is going to be an issue between now and our next meeting, maybe in uh, September. But <clears throat> if we have a nice storm, we need sheltering. Well, there's COVID. We don't have control over frontier per se. I mean, that's our shelter, designated shelter by the mm -hmm. state. But we do have control over Deerfield Elementary, you know, direct. Um, you know, the school committee controls frontier. So I think, is it worth us thinking about changing where our sheltering site is to the elementary school? And then looking at our sheltering plan, how are we gonna adjust it because of COVID situation? Are we gonna require just, you know, you do sorry, Corey checking as you're checking in people, but are we going to have antigen tests ready to do people as they check in? Are, what are we going to do about animals? I mean, I have always been supportive. We'll send all resources to Greenfield and Montague because we're part of a regional sheltering with Greenfield and Montague because they have, you know, the fire departments that, mm -hmm. you know, we'll set that up. And so we've always been part of that. But what if, what if we're cut off? You can't get up there. People of our town can't get up there. So we need to do something here. Mm -hmm. And so even if it's just opening up a place for people to charge their phones and stuff like that, we need to be able to do, we need to look at our plans and say, okay, what's changed from 2019, 20 and now because of COVID. And that's one of the key things that I feel is really important. Also, we as a team, I mean, I, we, we had good communication through COVID, I think, on the COVID response. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the situation is changing. The, these Omicron variants are immune evasive. So people are getting sick even when they're fully vaccinated. Thankfully, it's you know m more mild, but people are still getting sick. So we know that the, the BA275 is coming here in mid-September. We have no um, pool testing at the elementary school, no more mandatory masks. So yes, do I, do I think Darius has been doing a fantastic <clears throat> job, but he doesn't have any more tools. So what are we gonna do? We need to think about it. I've been going to meetings for months since the spring, because I was worried about BA5 coming here. The first BA5 case that was sequenced in Deerfield was Friday when school closed on Monday. It was close, but we made it. Right. And, but that BA275 is coming and it seems like every four or five months there's another surge of another variant. So we're gonna have possibly one in the early fall, the BA275 potentially, and then another one maybe right after Christmas break. So what are we gonna do? How do we support Darius? I have no idea. I have been going to all these meetings, national meetings, statewide meetings. Nobody has any clue. So we need to think about what we're going to do because it is so disruptive for the schools to close. We have to keep the schools open and operating uh, just, just so people can be fed. 
just, you know, we have a, a huge number of kids eligible for free lunch, mm -hmm. very disruptive. So what are we going to do? And I think that's going to be the agenda item for September mm -hmm. is <clears throat> what are we seeing? We can't predict stuff. Maybe something will emerge, but we don't have any ideas at this point to support Darius. So what are we going to talk about? I know we, we requested pool testing or requested funding for pool testing. Did anything happen from that? Not okay. yet. Just, I didn't probably, want to sidetrack the meeting. What's going to happen, curious. I'm hoping that, I mean, the mayor's wrote a letter. We're supposed to be, you know, a lot of people are pressuring the state. So two days before school starts, Desi, just like they did before, they'll just sit, come out maybe and say, we're going to do pool testing again, hopefully. Or school, schools will be shutting down and then they'll come out and say they'll support pool testing again. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that was effective because then, you know, if you had three kids in a classroom, you notified people, you could do mandatory, um, you know, masking in that classroom for five days and mm -hmm. then move on. You weren't shutting down the school. But I mean, I just don't know what we're going to do because you don't have staff. People get sick. And if you don't have enough of staff to run the schools, the schools aren't going to operate. So, but I have no other idea. I have no ideas. And nobody, as far as I know, has any ideas that are going to be effective for this fall. So we got to think of something. How are we going to support our schools? So no, I think we're going to go back to the basics. We're going to go back to masks. And if we have to close for five to 10 days to get it under control, it is what it is. I don't think there's, there's not answers out there. Right. It's situational dependent. How many kids pop positive? How many faculty pop positive? Obviously, if you get a group of faculty that pop positive, we can't replace them. You got to close. So right. every situation, exactly. again, requires uh, a different approach. And I think the good part is all of us have such a good working relationship with each other that you, myself, Tim, Trevor, Casey, all of us can sit in the room with Darius, Scott Dredge, George, and literally hash this stuff out in minutes, never mind hours. Oh, it, I know. The best part about Deerfield is there's no adversarial relationship with anybody. Right. right. Like every time we've ever set up like an emergency group or I've put people together because a storm's coming in, everybody's willing to help. Yeah. You know, all of our dynamic and, and type A personalities get set aside. We all come together as like a big family and it's amazing. So mm -hmm. I'm not concerned, but I do agree we need a discussion beforehand. Right. So instead of setting up a September meeting, I may see what people's availability is. And let's talk about the last week in August, right before school starts. Sure. Yeah. And, and let's hash this out mm -hmm. in more of a, a closed session with an emergency management team. Right. The problem becomes is if you want more participants than one select board member, now open meeting. Right. Now we're going to get into the publicizing it. Right. And it takes an emergency management meeting into an entirely yeah, different direction. Exactly. Right. So we've got to make that distinction as well. And I don't mind either way. I just throw it out there. No, it's true. We almost need a, a liaison so it's not dumbing it all up. I.e. Carolyn. You got to be nimble enough. I know. Yeah, we well, I still think that I still think that we need to still be together because the best decisions come out of joint mm -hmm. discussions, putting all our brains together. Look, looking at it from each perspective and then moving forward. I, I, that's why I I'm, wanted us to have this meeting, not so much that we have to go out one more night. Yeah, we know I got all this stuff we got to do, but um, what's changing, what is really bothering me is that in the beginning, we were, okay, we have the vulnerable population. We are protecting the vulnerable population. This is what we're going to do. Now it's like, okay, we're moving on, vulnerable population, you're on your own. So I'm having Cindy Majewski um, make sure that we're identifying as many people, um, the vulnerable seniors at least, who are homebound, um, who is vulnerable, who has you know, medical conditions that we need to worry about, and um, for all hazards, not just mm -hmm. COVID. Right. And so we have an up-to-date list She's coordinating with Triad and, and so on. And we're actually going to visit people because I've always had at least in the teens, high teens as homebound people. And Lisa only had six. And so that made me worried that that hasn't been updated accurately. Also, you have temporary homebound if someone falls and breaks their um, hip or whatever. So 
she's reaching out to the faith community because a lot of people, you know, in church groups know who has fallen and mm-hmm. whatever. So we're trying to collect that information and keep those lists current for any kind of situation. But, you know, we can deliver masks, we can deliver tests, we can try to protect those people as much as we can, but then we got to think, okay, what are we doing for communication? We have communication within our group, our core group, you know, our response team, um, which will include all the fire departments, water departments, everybody, nonprofits, but also within the communication with our public. How, how can we get the public to be more aware? Like John says, we need to be nimble and flexible. We'll have the wastewater treatment data that predicts pretty well if it's going up and then when it comes down. So we can, we'll have some data, but that's about our only data point. So how are we going to get information out? Fortunately, we have Chris who writes pretty accurately, which is great, but. Very how, accurately, how, I must say. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that compared to what we've had in the past, it's well, we're, really, really good. But um, how are we going to get out more? I mean, truthfully, there aren't a lot of people. Older people have the newspaper, but how do we get the 20 somethings? They're just not hooked up to the newspaper. So how do we. And they're not on them? Facebook. <laughs> they're on nope, Snapchat. They're on Instagram. So, yeah, Instagram. They're Instagram. On, mm-hmm. yeah. Insta, so we've Twitter. got to figure out how we're going to do that communication. And that communication in itself is a huge lift. But we've, if we're going to be effective for any of our events, all hazards, again, we're trying to focus on all hazards, just not COVID. But mm-hmm. if we're dealing with COVID, how does that change our response for some of this like flooding or ice storms? And then how, and then if COVID itself has it becomes, I mean, I, I, I really feel that we have another year at least of COVID, if not longer. So how do we manage that um, in changing what we're, how our response is? So I, John, you um, already do these announcements through various electronic means to alert folks. Uh, about specific issues. So I would suspect you would use a similar alert mechanism for, you know, there's been an uptick in, uh, you yes. know, data from the wastewater, you know, COVID testing, um, you know, we're going to be monitoring the schools, whatever. So I, I think we are actually in reasonably good shape in terms of reaching a, a large percentage of the population. Mm-hmm. Do you have any different idea about that or? No, right now the police department, we have obviously Facebook. Most people know that Instagram, yeah. Twitter, and then we use the rave system. So between those four and then local media with Chris is amazing. Um, very accurate in what he writes. <laughs> very much a pleasure to work with um, compared to past. Um, I think we, we reach out to the vast majority of people where I think we're missing is actually dedicating somebody as the communication manager. Right. So when COVID first hit, Carolyn will remember this. I was putting out a vast array of information. I was setting up groups. I was setting up working environments. I was setting up all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden there was a massive pushback from a couple other boards of health members and other communities, our partners that said, who is he? Mm -hmm. And why is he sending all this? And I'm like, okay. And I had to call Carolyn offline and say, do you want me to continue? Do you not? I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I don't want anybody offended. Like, how do you want to handle this? And, and so we had to have that conversation offline. It's always good to know what people's areas of responsibilities are. Mm-hmm. So we're all on the same page because we don't want to offend people, but we want to get the information out. Right. Yes. Well, that was an odd response because what we were trying to do is respond as South, South County. So, and, and that was before Zoom. So we were doing, you know, our conference calling right. um, number. Mm-hmm. And so, and we were, but we had calls every single week. Yep. So I set up those calls every single week. Yep. And, and we did have participation from the other three towns, boards of health, fire, police, um, you know, town administrators, everybody was on. It was on. a good core group. It yeah, was, yeah, it, it was, was excellent. I mean, sometimes we were, we were averaging 60, 70 people on a phone call every week. And, and a couple of times we had twice a week. So that, w- that worked out fine. And then Zoom came online and we started Zooming once in a while, but then that sort of fell apart and we haven't really done much after, you know, what it was really like after the first year. Yeah. yeah well, once, I mean, once we realized, okay, here, here, you know, right. it's not 
hundreds of body bags at Franklin Medical. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, if you're very, you know, if you're immune and we, we learned as we right. went through what this was doing to us and how you had to protect yourself. And then finally, when the vaccines came out, which were painfully slow and a horrible rollout from the state, yep. I'll say it again, horrible rollout yep. from the state. They finally got it. Um, we finally got a system in place to, to take care of people. But then you, we started again with the whole convert, like, the communication and how do you get this information out to people? How are they, you know, how do we keep it local? So it's not like people, so many people driving from Boston to come get vaccines. And so, uh, but there was another whole. Uh, I think the know, one thing that it, it looking back, I, you know, from my perspective, what I screwed up on is I didn't realize, um, you know, that the vaccines were going to get rolled out through, signing up on the internet right if if looking back at that we you know the library shut down and we had seniors that were not able to get online the police were wonderful they oh, stepped yeah. up man they, they signed up overnight people, and we had a couple of community volunteers that were absolutely fantastic <laughs> and, we, and our seniors did get signed up but i think I think in retrospect we should have had the ability to keep the library open and access so people could get to the computers somehow. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, I, you know, when we have the Homeland Security AAR after action report, it's supposed to, we're gonna get the draft on Friday. Um, and then this Friday, supposedly. And then the, our MAPCO AAR is supposed to be here in September for our September meeting. After and that, action report. After yeah. Action. She, she actually said it this time. And, yeah. And, and then, and then the Franklin County one is supposed to be here pretty soon yes. too, but I haven't seen anything that we can actually start talking about at this point. So I'm hoping right. when we set up this next meeting, we'll have all these documents to look at and say, okay, how do we cover the gaps? What, what do we do? What can we do that's better than we responded to already? There are a couple after action reports um, that I think it was from the ice storm, John, was it? Mm -hmm. um, that yep. was countywide from the ice storm. And I believe Snowtober, which was 2011. Um, and that, those are interesting to look at. And we could, you know, that could be homework that we could say, okay, are we up to date on those gaps still? Because, you know, it comes down to a lot of times just communication and organization. And um, we had the MAC, which is the Multi-Agency Coordination mm -hmm. Center. Uh, we pushed that through Homeland Security, John and I, because again, it's a capacity you have, if you have an extended event, you can't have people, um, us, we just we gotta go home and go to bed at some point. I wanna add to that because the MAC when, um... I was involved a, a little bit with FERCOG's after action report with um, Argygen, did an amazing job. These guys are incredible military, like 50,000 level foot, extremely smart people uh, put together this after action report and they really honed in on beefing up that Mac mm -hmm. because it was not used the way it should have been used. They recognized right away what a gem that you guys developed mm -hmm. and that should have been used more and it had been elevated more and taken a more, you know, a higher role. But they, the Mac, I think, felt like, well, what's our authority? You know, and so laying out that authority, like these guys are in charge and they pass it down through and, and people get get rest and all of that stuff, setting that up. That was pretty eye opening to me in that report. It's well, an amazing system. I, I mean, you could be in a well, you could be in the EOC emergency center of operations, but at some point you need to go home yep. and, and go to bed. Yep. And the problem is there's only a few of us and it just, you gotta have that extra capacity. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I believe really strongly in the Mac and yep. mm -hmm. John and I really pushed that on the Homeland Security end. And um, we got money and I think we have the ability, people have had training. Yep. So I think we need to rely on that a little bit more. Agreed. We don't have a problem with it. Right, because we are strong enough together. It, it I, hate, I hate to say it, it's an ego thing, and I, I don't understand it myself because you should be looking out for your community. Mm -hmm. But 
whatever. It doesn't matter. The Mac will work for us. Yes. So I'm fine with it. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else we should be looking at, John. You know, one of my concerns is the select board these days has such diverse information that I hate to overwhelm you guys with everything. Mm -hmm. It actually works better, slightly compartmentalized. If I get one member, that's the emergency management side, one member that's doing sewer. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there is so much to being a select board member these days. We're winding the clock 10 or 20 years ago. It is absolutely night and day from what the state expects. Uh, absolute night and day. It's completely yeah. different than what I expected. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh yeah. I mean, you're expected to know like everything and everything under the sun. And at a certain point you go into brain overload and you become less useful in your own core areas. Yeah. So it, it's almost better dealing with one board member mm -hmm. like Carolyn, that's got a passion in emergency management or anybody else. Agreed. And yeah. then it's only dial because... us in when we need to be dialed in. Well, you can do yeah. the basics. You can do the right. 100 class online. You can exactly. have the very basics, but to dive in and right. be involved in more meetings and more meetings. It's, I, I really, I prefer to focus with one individual mm -hmm. and grasp the emergency management team together. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. Except I think it's really important that all of us be able to be interchangeable mm -hmm. and um, one, one of the things that is making me, it makes me really happy is that there is more people aware of the rivers. I know you follow, we got to get Tim on the, on the, um, you know, Tex. getting the Texas in the middle of the I night. I just got to level, I got to bring it up. When I first started following the river level, mm -hmm. I set it at 5,000. Mm -hmm. What a mistake. I mean, that's high, right? But it, it I, I still said it, 5,000. It I needs know, to be like, night, it's mm -hmm. clicking. Because I'm getting texts at 5,000 cubic feet per second coming down the Deerfield River. And so it's like text after text after text when it's really not an issue. Mm -hmm. But it's important because you want to know what's happening. You know, it gives you a sort of a pre warning. But what Tim needs to know, or, you know, is that if it's nine or 10,000 in Charlemont CFS, mm -hmm. that translates to the Stillwater Bridge at 27 to 30,000 CFS. Huge. At 30,000, you're starting to, to tip over Stillwater Road. And then that means we're gonna have flooding of five and 10, and the town is gonna to start getting split up. And so that's really a huge issue. And then we haven't had, we haven't had the combined flooding of the Connecticut and the Deerfield in my time. It's always been Deerfield or there are issues on the Connecticut. Right. But different watersheds. Different watersheds. But if we had a combine, if we had a big enough hurricane that came up through the Connecticut Valley versus going out to the side a little bit, right. That you that the Connecticut River was sort of isolated off, and we had both kinds of, you know, both watersheds were involved, it's a different kind of flooding. It's a flooding that backs up the Deerfield River. So the velocity is less um, uh, and, the, and the flooding is more intense. The Connecticut River, when the Connecticut River rises, you have all different issues in South Deerfield and Sunderland area, right. which is cuts off the, Sund you know, the Sunderland Bridge kind of thing. So it's really important to understand the rivers and, and what happens in our intense events. Deerfield, you have the Berkshire Hills, then you come down to the Deerfield River Valley, then you go up the Pocumptic and then you come down the Deerfield. And that is the whole splits Deerfield all the way up and down. So our, not only are we bottom of the bowl, which you know, you I say all the time, but we have these intense events that come off the hillsides, which is much more like the Berkshires, like Beckett mm -hmm. and why we've done the bundled NOI is because we have these intense events that causes us issues and over overwhelms our infrastructure. So we have, we're more at risk for a lot of different things than you would think. Just like there's a lot more activity in the town of Deerfield in general, we have a lot more susceptibility to natural events. And that's, that's one of the reasons I'm trying to understand the river is really, really important. Trevor's been really good about that. John has been really good about getting Sense um, out. police out checking. And so that our, Patrol guys know what's going on. Our highway guys, they've incorporated the highway into that. So the highway guys know, you know, so, sort of what we have to look for. And so I don't think it will be that big a deal for you to 
get caught up on that, Tim. I mean, that's something that you can start watching. And uh, Thanks, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> don't set your phone to it, Tim. Yeah. We'll monitor it. Yeah. You don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night. Yes. So, yes, we have 24-hour patrols that monitor those when I assign them to Right. Yep. Yep. And, and also, if they need to wake me up, they wake me up, and then I will wake up the rest of the team, including right. highway. We will send a rave alert out. Hurricanes are not as much of an issue. No, they don't scare of- me as much as a small storm it that trains. develops and then it just stalls. Trains. Yes. And all of a sudden, Brutal. you turn into one, four, 10, 13 inches of rain. Now you've got a problem. Yeah. Now you're dealing with hours. Hurricane, you're dealing with days. Right. It's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Every national media, every local media is all about it. People are watching it. They're focused on it. They're waiting for a phone call from me. They're not with a single storm coming right. through. And then all of a sudden it starts to stall. Those are the ones that concern me. Yeah. Well, like last July, we had the storms weren't as intense as John's talking about, but it was one after another after another. So you had super saturated soil. And that's when we have issues because then we have, you know, we have it reactivates a landslide that we had back in 2011 after Snowtober. And that, you know, brings down silt. And, it, and it, then that's a huge issue. For well, us. this too, like it has been a very dry summer. So when you get a massive monsoon that comes through right now, it runs off so fast yeah. and you run into some issues. So it's a- the, the averages at the end of the year are not that far off from each other. So when you go through a drought like this, when, when is that deluge coming? It's and that's coming. another reason why I wanted to have this meeting because we haven't really been focusing on that kind of stuff right. again. And we need to get up to speed again. Yeah. And so who knows when it's going to come, but we will probably have more ice storms. Like I said, because the Noah's saying that it's going to be the third La Nina year. So that means more Atlantic storms, but also have, we'll have more ice storms rather than snowstorms. Mm-hmm. So, so what are we suggesting that we need to do um, specifically mm-hmm. um, other than to discuss the tragedies that could happen. I think, I think, well, the main thing I think is that we should organize another um, ICS training because I would love to just refresh. It's been several years. Um, okay. So an ICS training gets you on Han. Yeah, that, for sure. Get through that. And a web EOC uh, for D, at least DPH. And then, um, and we can do that after tonight just mm-hmm. to get it done. Um, we and should have a rave cross training so that true. more of us know how to get on rave. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and I still think it's really, I mean, not yet because we got so much to do at this point, but I still think communication, communication, communication is really important. So I, I Sandra Martin over in the Berkshires, I know her really well. I think she'd be willing to come and just do, um, some PIO training for us, um, mm-hmm. um, public information training that would be helpful to us, you know, um, for all of us. And, and that, I think that would be good. And I'll, I'll ask her if she'd be willing to do Or that. Tim could teach it. Hmm. Yep. Or Tim, right. No, let her do it. I'm happy to. <laughs> but Sandra Martin's a part student. of the incident management team and she, she handles the, um, you know, she's one of the original members. So what's the R stand for? Public information. Response. Yeah. yeah. Well, PIO is the public information officer. officer. Oh, PIO. PIO training. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. PIO. I meant, um, it's just, how do you, how do you, how do you understand? How can you relay? I, I use, I go on and on and on. That's, I know I'm, I can't have enough PIO training because I know I overkill everything. But I have tried. The first step is recognition. No. We're well I aware try that very not hard give you a mic. not to give yes. too many details. Script, yes. Script, script, script. Script. But the uh, problem is stuff is complicated. And it, it you is. Know, it's it hard to boil it down into, you know, four or five words. Mm-hmm. So, With but media, I know there's that there's always one rule. Less is more. I know. I know. I try so hard. I have so many cheat sheets. I have them all over the place, but yeah. you never can have enough PIO training. I think. So when we designate somebody on Deerfield PD as the PIO, we send them to a week long, 40 hour FBI certification course. And they teach them about local national media, what they're looking for, 
what they're not looking for, the buzzwords, right. what to say, what not to say. There's role playing. They videotape themselves. Yeah. They watch themselves. They critique it on and on and on. So it's important. It is because at any moment, Deerfield PD can be on the front page with CNN, MSNBC. Like oh, it absolutely. happens anywhere. Yes. And you got to have somebody that is well versed in, you know, speaking intelligently. I, I think the place is focused on the resources that we have. So if we're yeah. going to have a PIO, John can determine right. who that could be. Somebody who's gone through that training that understands, you know, in a pinch, we're going to send you out there in front of the camera. Yeah. But, yeah. The hard part with this, and, and this is where Carol and I, often separate is you can't train everybody to do everything. Exactly. There I has know. to be two or three PIOs. They have to be good at their trade. Yep. And when an event transpires, we've got to rely on one, two or three of them. Yep. We can't train everybody as a PIO. Right. I would never give you a microphone. <laughs> Love you to death. Not happening. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> he won't give me one either. Just in case right. <laughs> Yes. So short and to the point. Yes. Yeah. Um, but we've got to pick and choose those trades and build that capacity. That means there can't be one person. It's got to be two or three. It can't be 15. It's got to be two, two or three. three. But I those know. two or three have to be good at what they do. Correct. Same but thing you- as policing. Yes. You know, I don't have 17 sexual assault investigators. I have four. One came in tonight. I had to call somebody in on overtime yeah. to deal with an incident already reported on Eve shift this evening. That's what transpires. There are 26 members of our agency. They're not all certified in a 40 hour sexual assault class. Right. It's not practical. It's right. not reasonable. You can't do it. We've got to pick and choose people's uh, best skill sets and yeah. utilize them. One person I really want to bring in from the, the private side, because I think she'd be amazing, is Jay Yankowski. That helped us yes. with all the COVID sign up. Us with Jay COVID is sign-up. sharp as a tack. Yes. And, uh, and if she I can wrap great. my arms onto her and drag her into this emergency management, I, I think that she could dramatically help the community yeah. if she'd be interested. Yeah, she, well, that's she what we great. have to do. We want, we want to develop capacity. That's my concern, John. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yep. Not, yep. I'm not disagreeing with you about you know, training 15 million people, but the likelihood of us being out a town and something happening mm-hmm. is really it could happen. Mm-hmm. And, and it's really important that we can be cross-trained enough and we have enough people to fill in that we can respond mm-hmm. adequately. And that's, again, that's my really concern is to just bring in everybody, no siloing, no, nobody acting on their own, everybody work together. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so that's why it's important to bring in the EMS, the fire departments, the, you know, water departments, all our agencies that provide our sewer treatment operators. Um, so they're, they are aware how, to, how, you know, what we do in an emergency, you know, we have to update our list. I, I don't have, you know, one of the things that's really important is that we're not doing that and we're not passing out information to people as much as we were um, before. And I just want to make sure we're going through stuff mm-hmm. and, and, and making sure we're all on the same page. It's not that it's not there and that, that there aren't cheat sheets that we can pull out, but it's just, I wanna make, I just feel uncomfortable. We haven't done much lately. So to reiterate, so I'm not taking up too much of the board's time. Number one, I've rebuilt capacity. Number two, I have quarterly meetings. Number three, I have Tim on the Han, Han and uh, any other access that he needs. Number four, I have rave cross training. Number five, old, old Deerfield flood. I'm going to resend that recent plan over to Matt and Chris McDougal, who's the new public safety director up there. So they, yes, right. they're on board with that. Number six, reunification. Um, we use state police. They're amazing. Every, uh, I think we have four or five cruisers that actually have boxes in the back of them with reunification sign-offs right. with, um, the actual vest that we utilize that we used at our drive through flu clinic at um, the highway garage. Number seven, shelter. We want to discuss with Darius, Frontier versus DES. Number eight, uh, meeting just prior to school start. Number nine, communication, media managers, designation, training. Number 10, South County Emergency Management Team, mm-hmm. pulling in EMDs from Conway, Sunderland, and Waitley, uh, Board of Health representatives, and making sure we're all on the same page. Um, 
10 a was for, uh, for me to reach out to Jay, see if I can yank her involved mm-hmm. in this. Cause I think she's amazing. Yeah. Number 11 ICS training, reach out to John Taylor, see if we can set something up for that. Yeah. And number 12 is kind of update a phone list as to emergency contacts for folks. Right. Good enough. Start good enough. Start the, um, you know, we've been waffling on this generator at, at elementary school. We put 35,000 up. I don't know how many years ago. And that keeps, that's a, that's a four or four years. That's a, a hot football that just keeps hot potato keeps getting pushed back and forth every time we come around the Capitol, because Darius is like, I'm not pulling up the money. We don't really, we're never going to use it. And then we're talking, well, if it's going to be a shelter, you know, we put one here. So we're, we're now set up for this building. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously it's our, our hub of operations, but I just want to say, do we want to think about that again, or do we want to just not? So it really depends if that's going to be a, let me yeah. get back to you on oh, that. You got a hand up. Casey. I do have a question about designating uh, the elementary school as a shelter. I think there needs to be a conversation with the school committee. Oh, of course. To really oh, yeah. get, it's, it's see there. what their feelings are on this, yeah. especially as it relates to what we do, yeah. you know, dealing why, with the generator. Why it's, why it's brought, been brought up is because um, it's come up in Homeland Security discussions that a lot of your high schools, regional high schools, have been designated as um, shelters. And then because of COVID, they have not been allowed to been used as the school committees had said no. And so this discussion came up and I'm like, wow, I didn't really think about it because our relationship with Darius is so good that it didn't even occur to me that we might have issues with the school committee, which is different than, I mean, which is, you know, and Darius you're trying has to keep to, schools open and right. you've, now you're using it as a shelter. Right. Well, so, this but is we have, too, so, but we have control over the elementary school versus having to go through the school committee for the frontier. So we'll weigh that out with Darius in a side meeting. Yeah. 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 So relative to the generator, the reason I was smiling is as we take the 400 megahertz system offline, the old police and fire radio system. Yeah. And we're now on the 800 system, the new system. One of the tower sites that we are going to be getting rid of is Royalston. Royalston has a shelter at it. It is a concrete structure that is a singular set down yeah. from a massive flatbed that was brought up there. However, there is a generator in there that the FERCOG is looking at declaring surplus property oh. for us. I have put the FERCOG folks in touch with Billy Hildreth. Oh, oh perfect. I don't know if that's going to awesome. work out. I want to see yeah. where that conversation yeah. transpires and how it goes in the next 30 to 60 days. Okay. Because we perfect. have money to maybe do the other half. Like if we get the thing, maybe the money we can use to. I, I know believe. we had to retrofit the electrical. And I stuff. thought they already put the electrical in. I, I thought, I yeah, there know. was this communication uh, on whether they did it or didn't. And so we we'll just work it out. Of, yeah. Work yeah. It out. And That's then maybe the emergency it. management team can talk to Darius and figure out if, is it worth the investment if we can't get that generator to put forth a warrant article on for annual town meeting mm-hmm. to get that building done next. Right. Yeah. And we've always kind of, yeah, I know Darius was like, man, I don't really use it. But if we're going to use it for something like that, then it makes sense. Well, my concern is, is it may be too small for a shelter when you start dealing with animals, with people. One of the reasons you look at Frontier is there is long-term showers. There's locker rooms. There is not at the elementary school. So this is part of the side conversation that I don't want to bog tonight's meeting down with, but we do want to have with Darius. We can always enter into an MOU in advance with the Frontier Regional School Committee and Darius and say, hey, listen, if an event happens, this is what we'd like to do. Yep. Right. So I think that's a great response, John. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, we'll you have that conversation that in Darius. that management team with Darius. Yeah. I just, um, it was I'm just important to lights. have that discussion yeah. because it has come up in the last couple of years because of COVID. It's a valid yeah. point. No, that's, yeah. that's, yeah, I've got, reasonable. I mean, you always list. have, you always are going to have conflict because if you have a nice storm in the winter and you keep the schools open or whatever, we tend to shut down because of Conway being up in the hills. But if, if you're sheltering in there, you're not running schools. Right. Yeah. I right. mean, if you're yeah. literally pulling in populace because you've lost power, yeah. school's not running. Yeah. So okay. I'm not concerned about that. I'm more concerned about our relationship with the school committee, Darius, making sure they're comfortable. Because even after we close a shelter, we can put Kevin in there. We have two or three of the, the sanitizing blowers. We can go through each and every classroom. And Frontier probably has them as well. I think they we do. may have bought them for DES and Frontier. They do. I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about 
making sure Darius and the school committee are comfortable. And if we need to getting an MOU in advance, right. If that makes both sides more comfortable, great. We'll work it out. Yeah. Um, I was, um, so let's set up some meetings. I think it's a good idea to have a meeting before, um, school starts. School, school, school starts. Now I was going to try to see if I can get the epi that we have under the epidemiologists that we have under the grant, um, come and do some presentation of our, with our data, like the 18th or the 25th, we could have him come like the 25th and then have us have a meeting afterwards. First day of school for Ian is the 30th, which means Allie is probably the 29th in seventh grade, which means the schools are probably opening August 29th. A lot of families will be on vacation, but we probably want to shoot for the week of the 22nd to the 26th. And we probably want to make it an evening meeting if we can, just I due would, to yeah, yeah. Um, fire chiefs and EMS folks and getting everybody on board, see maybe Darius's availability. The 25th yeah. has already been scheduled for a zoning board of appeals meeting here. So if we're going to have it someplace else, we can do the 25th, mm -hmm. but that's a hybrid meeting for ZBA. So they need the room. Uh, so what, what we're talking about August. Yes. August. How about the 26th, which is That's a Friday. Friday night? It's a Friday night. A lot of people are not going to want to come yeah, on Friday night. They're not going to no. want to come. There's also a vaccine clinic. Yeah, oh, yeah. We have the clinic until seven. I forgot. Um, geez. You have a meeting on the 24th. Um, they, the select board does? The select board does. Well, we could, we could have this. Tuesday, season. the 23rd. We could try the 23rd. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't know I do if finance is a meeting. No. 22nd? 22nd's good. Uh, Monday the 22nd? I got nothing. Pencil uh, tentatively. Seen, we yeah. got to make sure that yeah, whatever's check on, and we, it's got to be tentative because I got to check that. Oh, we, absolutely. We could, do, we could do it on Wednesday night, though. That is part of our agenda. Got, no, no, no. I, I want to do got, like no, an emergency too management meeting. Right. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. You'll get too bogged down. You'll get nothing done with the select board. All right. Right. You're going to have things to do. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're tentatively looking at the 22nd. I will have to check that. And or the 22nd or the 23rd? 22nd. Trevor's 22nd. not on the 23rd. Oh, you're not yep. being able? Okay. Yeah. So it'd be Monday the 22nd. All right. And we'll try and bring our, our emergency management team together. Yep. Could we meet uh, at five instead of six? Because I have a seven o'clock. Okay. Um, I mean, I can. Yes. I have a seven o'clock senior housing meeting. And we have already have, we have some financing people coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can get through it in the hour and a half ish? I think we can. Um, yeah, I mean, if Carolyn has to leave early, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I feel okay about leaving. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, was, I can just go and Zoom in the next room. Mm -hmm. So, so five o'clock on the 25th. What's that? Five o'clock on the 20th. I mean, second. 22nd, excuse me. And you're going to post it as a select board meeting so they all can come? Or are you we doing a single designated person? No, we're going to do a select board meeting. Okay. I, I, we, ha we have to work together. And so. Mm -hmm. We're all sharing meeting. the joy of another meeting. Yes. I, I I just think we we got it. Part of it is communicating and how how we can communicate together. Mm -hmm. And I I I'm okay with you know making it be smaller afterwards. But I I, I think we got to follow up here. And and I'll have to try to see if the epi epidemiologist can do a small fifteen or twenty minute. Um, so what's the agenda for the meeting going to be? We'll have to set it in advance. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what yeah. I mean. I want people to think about what that's going to be because we need to be clear and concise as we yes. run this meeting. Otherwise, I'll see if, I, I have to see if the epi is available too. And he can come and do a presentation on some of the data, what we possibly could do for schools and stuff. I mean, I, I, I just want to make sure that we're, we're doing we have some information. That's all. yeah. My concern is is I. You don't want it. You don't want to be. What I would like to see is building the capacity, being the central. You know, let's let's develop so the you, structure. Epidemiologist is a, is one small facet of this thing. It doesn't seem to be part of planning and bringing these emergency responders right yeah. together. Well then. And How about we have a meeting on the 18th then with him? 
I mean, that was sort of what I was doing, gonna do. Well, that's what I was wondering. Emergency management wise, there's two different things at hand. There's the school and their COVID response protocol, which is what you're talking about. That's, that's one issue that's board of health related. I don't know if I would call that emergency management still at two and a half years of COVID. It is deeply, deeply concerning, but it's, we're no longer really truly an emergency phase. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, there are antivirals. There are yeah. treatments. Kids are not getting that sick. Like on and on and on. Um, we're not in that emergency management role. I don't want to bring in all the fire chiefs, the EMS chief, and get everybody in right. here I, and I, bog them down with a board of health we'll discussion. Right. Yeah. We'll keep so it separate. Let's let's focus, like John said. Let's focus. And, so and we'll John have can, we'll post. Uh, I'll verify that he's available on the 18th, and we'll post a Zoom meeting for because he's from the eastern part of the state, so he'd probably like to do Zoom. So we need a select board meeting on the 18th as well. Yeah, I'll just verify that he's available on the 18th. I had I'm not tentatively... putting it in my calendar until you verify. All right. Well, I had tentatively scheduled that with him, but um, <clears throat> I'll verify that he's still available. And you're going to invite uh, Darius to that meeting on the 18th and see yeah. his availability? Yes. Yeah, so I would, uh, I would check with those two people. Yep. Because if Darius is not available. I know. Point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know. Yeah, what, I just want to try and differentiate between the two. Yes. Yeah. No, John, you're absolutely right. What Tim's time right. do you want to have this it's, meeting on the 18th? Uh, I don't know. We could do it at six, I guess. I think you should find out who this person is and see what they want to do if they're going to come. Oh, yeah. No, I know. He has, he has a, like, he did, he already did Greenfield. He's, I think he's going to do Montague on the 17th. So um, <coughs> he has a set presentation with the, each town's data. So this is a select board meeting. You want to do it remote? Yes, we can. We'll do Zoom. We you don't want to invite other board of health and not make this an emergency management thing, but actually like we've always South County more. Board of Health. We yeah, had, South we've County. always we've had um, we've always had the four boards of health meet together with the four five school committees, but I don't think that's going to work this year. Gotcha. So, <clears throat> Just throwing out ideas, it's all. No, yeah. yeah, it was very effective. I really like the idea of all of us meeting together, but I don't think it's going to work this year. Yeah, so let me know what you need because it, I mean, it doesn't sound like I need to be there the 18th. Like, no, yeah, sounds it like sounds more of a like board of health more issue. Of a board of health issue. Like, Making sure you're comfortable with Darius and you guys come up with some thoughts in advance. And well, you might want to participate just so you can get the mm -hmm. information. Yeah. Um, and if you have any thoughts or ideas, because you're pretty practical. I, it's, it's trying to come up with something that will work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what we'll have any more information between now and the 18th, but. Masks, vaccines, and closures as necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Next. I think really, those are the three key things. Yeah, what, yeah. what keeps coming up is air ventilation. This is why she loves me. No, I just, <laughs> well, it's air ventilation and air exchanges. So as long as we can keep the windows open, yep. And we have air exchanges, you know, three or four times an hour. It, it, the problem is this, this, these new Omicron variants are so immune evasive and they're, you can get them outside now. It's really, you got to keep space. So you're not breathing on each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you can, just can't be together for, for very long. That's the most transmittable one. Yeah. yeah. To date. Yep. Yep. Good. So the 22nd Monday, we would look at actually setting up an emergency management group meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still would be posted because I want all three of us to mm -hmm. be involved. And to, at least until Tim feels comfortable mm -hmm. with contact lists, some cheat sheet lists, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would feel comfortable with John drafting a list of, of the things I actually need to be involved in. <laughs> And um, what I need to learn first, mm -hmm. I can focus on that. And we as do I, need to narrow the focus. You're right, yeah. Tim. Because I mean, otherwise, it gets overwhelming. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It gets overwhelming for all of us. So I think if we can narrow the focus and and try to stick to and whatever that is for each meeting. Yeah, your expertise is managing emergencies by definition as a police chief. <clears throat> you know, so I, I respect your ability to figure out what it is I need to in the first. As I go along, yes, expand what I need to know, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a core, core group of things that I need to know initially. 
and focus on those. And once I feel comfortable with those, I can add more. What, what John brings to the table is he's organized, but he has contacts. Mm -hmm. And really, in, in the end of the day, it's who your network is and who your contacts are. And, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I just make sure you have as many cell phone numbers as anybody and his brother that you do know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, also have a responsibility tree. Like, I'm not going to duplicate things that John's going to mm -hmm. do. So he's going to contact me, tell me there's, you know, concerning flooding on the Deerfield River. And he might say, you know, can you handle these two things? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's that works. I mean, hitting the emergency us, buttons easy. Yeah. Managing the beast that comes with it is mm -hmm. the challenge. And right. there's two challenges to it. Usually it's the personnel, as Carolyn well noted. The second side of it is, is justification and documentation for reimbursement from MEMA and FEMA, mm -hmm. because everything's got to be documented. Yeah. So you've got to have a scribe, you've got to manage budgets, and you need emergency budget authorizations. That's where the emergency approval comes in. Mm -hmm. And that's where Casey, Brenda, and I get together as a side team and we start to work that. So there's there's quite a bit that goes into it, but it's only as difficult as you make it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a deb debris management plan that is critical that if we have a lot of trees down, that we follow it because that's how you get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. And um, these are all, sounds like we have a lot of plans. Mm -hmm. Yes. We do. So that's a we good have thing. a checklist yep. for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Kevin is well, well aware of some of this stuff, but to me, it's, it's important to have a cheat sheet so that you can say, okay, you don't have to go through the whole damn plan. You just have a checkoff list. You know where your spot was, who, you know, who's, who's um, checking in the truckloads, what's your documentation. It's, that's why one of the reasons we always declare an emergency early if we know it's coming, because then all your documentation, you start, you get everybody set up to document mm -hmm. and, and you have no issues with reimbursement. We have, you know, last July, there was issues because we didn't meet, we had certainly enough damage locally. There was, we have met all the thresholds locally, but when then you take it statewide and you take the population base, we didn't quite make it. So there wasn't any um, federal declaration for our storms last July, but we all got documentation. And as a result, we were able to get some additional money from the state. Yeah, a special thank you to Senator Comerford. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we were able to that show, you know, it was only about like 10% of what we had in damage, but 400,000 is 400,000. It's a lot know. of money at the end of the day. Right. Yep. And we've been trying to use it to fix things as it is. But, you know, there was clearly millions of dollars worth of damage. And you, could, you have to have the documentation so that you can get reimbursement. So everybody's been trained about that really well. You know, the police, John the highway department, EMS, everybody's on board on that. Yeah. So I think I'm good. Yeah, we're done. Me Trevor, too. Tim, no, I think I'm good. The only thing, uh, so I sent um, an email to you just with the email to get on to Han. I think you emailed them and asked to be added yes. and then yes. you fill out your thing. What about the um, web, e EOS, web. Uh, web EOC? We have to have our rep set them up an account. Right. Okay. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great if he if we somebody I don't know, somebody gets when him you on say that. Web. Web EOC is the MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Sign In Site, where you can actually see what's going on Commonwealth wide. Right. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's a MEMA thing. I yeah. was just questioning the word web. Is that was that meaning online? Yes, yes. it yes. just means online. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And it's then just we an have, application online. And then there's DPH, right? Which we have a joint. Mm -hmm. um, account there's a i don't even have access to the dph fema one. sid number as well right um just trying to think of the other things that he should be yeah i mean we, again we only want him to start in the basics right yeah yeah okay yeah there's no sense in drinking out of a fire hose the web yeah. the han and the web the web eoc is important mm -hmm. i think because that way you can yeah the longer you do it, you're like, I don't want it. <laughs> I know. Don't give me that one. Don't give me that one. Stop that one. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anything, uh, anything else for me? No, John. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Like I said, I'll, I'll start through the list and uh, we'll start working through. Yeah. Thanks, Thank John. you. I'm going to try and meet with, um, with Lori tomorrow. She's been great. Yep. And uh, kind of establish a plan. I think I'm going to bring Jen 
and add them on board. And uh, then we'll start building capacity outside of that. I want to get in touch with our nonprofits, but I, I talk to them all the time anyway. So I want to get the fire chiefs in the same room again. Yep. And uh, don't forget the water districts. Don't forget um, our sewer treatment guys. We need contact. Yeah. Once uh, I want to get our, our initial management team in there versus the extended folks. Yep. So the initial team is your fire chiefs, EMS director, the select board. It's really that core focus group. Yeah. And wow. then we'll go into a more extensive group with 35 people in a row. But we've got to start with the 15. I know, but we just can't forget the water districts. Yeah. I, I, that's what I'm mostly concerned about. Mm -hmm. In any flooding event, you know, the wells will go down and, mm -hmm. and people's personal wells will go down. Mm -hmm. So we, we, our testing capacity will be through the water districts, mm -hmm. you know, for people's private wells. Mm -hmm. And then we, of course, we want to make sure people are online for yeah. the public water supplies as well. Yep. But um, that in itself is just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, and then sewer treatment plant operators, we want to make sure that they are part of our team too. Mm -hmm. And then they are familiar with everybody. Yep. Again, the larger the team is, the harder it is to control. I know. And Are I, they I, managers? Remember the management team. So you have a core group and then you've got the larger group. So some of these folks are in the larger group. Some are in the, the actual core group. Yeah, yeah. no, this is a core group, but yeah. I want to get that larger group. Mm -hmm. It's really key that we do that at least a couple times a year. Yeah. With yeah. everybody. Yes. You know how we get together Even for the so people as when you and I started this 10 years ago, when I first started here one month from now, um, somebody sent me a reminder today. Um, <laughs> yeah. Brian Rust that sits on Homeland Security with us. Yeah. Came up in his like news media, like flags. I'm like, oh, thanks, Brian. Yeah. For <laughs> aging me. So when I started here 10 years ago, it was good for everybody to sit in the, the same room because we had a hurricane coming up and some people did not know each other. Right. And once you see those same faces over and over again, and you exchange cell phone numbers, and you get a master friends. tree list yeah. and, you know, Tim sees somebody on the street and he goes, oh, that's who runs the old Deerfield, you know, sewer treatment plant. That's who yeah. runs this. And yeah, that is massive, massive during an event. When mm -hmm. you pick up the phone and you know who you're talking to, and yes. you have a face on the other side and that's massive. Yep. That's part. Yep. One, one of the things that we, um, Trans Canada used to have their e web you know, their EOC up in Cal Calgary and you could call them and you could get a status report for all their dams. But now that they've been sold out to seriously just investment bankers, there, there's no really place anymore that you can call. So we have, we have cell phone numbers of people that are going to be on duty and we need to make sure that we are current with them because that's you know, why we retire. have the emergency management director yes. That's what we organizing have these lists yep. with yep. the call numbers and which which part of the core group is going to be responsible, mm -hmm. which element of the response. Right. right. If it's a stream, I may not be, if the river, I may not be involved because I'm not the one that's designated. Mm -hmm. But that's why, yeah, we need this, a structure. This, the whole point and, is to, is and, to and this is get the structure so, so together. so slimmed down it. now. It needs to be something right. not like that. It right. needs to be a piece of paper that says this is. Right. Or on a. Yeah. Well, on, on a I mean. <laughs> I'm it's, it's, the emergency it's management here. room is on both your cell phones. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It was just sent to you. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, so thank if there's you. questions, we can call them anytime. Thanks, yep. I'm happy to swing by anytime. And yep, we'll be talking a lot and we'll work this through. Okay. Thank you, John. You have a good night. We've got a couple other discussion items. Um, the 1888 building uh, OPM contract for review and approval. Uh, do we have that? Okay. All right, so we'll wait on that. We'll bypass that. We do have um, a couple of, um, let's see, a couple of appointments. We've got, um, we have a, a letter from David Lawless that uh, says he's expressing interest uh, to, in joining the Community Preservation Committee. And I know we've been waiting for, for kind yeah. of confirmation that, he, yeah. that he's going to become confirmed onto that, uh, right. onto that uh, board. So, uh, oh, God bless you. We, the select board um, of the I'll town of Deerfield. Okay. Oh, I'll make that motion. All right. So I'll just read, we, the select board of the town of Deerfield, by virtue of the authority invested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint David Lawless. Um, to the Community Preservation Committee um, recommended by the Select Board 
for the term beginning August 3rd, 2022 and ending June 30th, 2023, given this day, um, the 3rd of August, uh, 2022. So a bit, a uh, motion. And, well, and why don't we do Sean Libby? Well, let me do this one oh, first. Okay. Motion. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. And then this one is just confirming, right? Because we, we don't appoint the CONCOM how points this one, but Correct. go ahead. I, I'll make a motion to appoint um, Sean Libby from the uh, Conservation Commission as a um, uh, member of the Community Preservation Committee. And we'll, again, we're confirming. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. And I'll second that confirmation. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Again, that's for the uh, beginning today, August 3rd, and going to June 30th, 2023. Okay. I think that's all our business for tonight. Anything else? Do you want to add anything, Casey? Just a couple of things. We're going to sure. see some changes in cannabis legislation. I saw um, that email. The, I did send the letter out to the governor's office um, after my two colleagues did. Yes. Actually, before what between one and the other, um, to ask that they not exercise this option to uh, it basically, I don't want to say eliminate, but nullify nullify our HCAs. So yeah. But I also had a conversation because we're following up on confidence analytics. I did have a conversation with council. Um, you will probably see a slight, a, a different HCA for confidence analytics. Right. Because of the changes in the legislation. So I have not sent them a copy because I did want to talk to council and our first opportunity was at three this afternoon. Okay. So before we send out something to confidence, um, I needed to know what council was going to do in terms of changing that HCA. So um, okay. we'll send that out once I get it from council. I will send that out to them. But just keep in mind that the cannabis legislation is, is going to have far reaching impacts on towns and possibly on the industry itself. Who, who's pushing that? No one. Industry. The industry. Is that right? They don't okay. want to pay any money. They wrote it. Yep. And okay. Baker. They don't want to. Yep. So the, the industry the doesn't want to pay. And yet, you know, one of the things I mentioned um, when I talked to my colleagues about this is how much money people have spent in legal fees to and negotiate we, these agreements right. in good faith to support their community. Yep. And that that argument was voiced by multiple members of my peer group and in one ear and out the other. Somebody might be getting a job in the industry. Um, so, um, so there was that that came up. There's probably something I'm missing, but in the last couple of days, that's been the thing that we've really been concentrating on in terms of the news coming down the pike from the state house. Okay. Uh, they're adjourned, right? They're done. I'm yeah. good. That was the only thing. And, I no, I meant the, the state house is done. Yeah, yeah they're done. done for yeah. they're, they've closed uh, their session. Uh, what, so what was the deal on the supplemental budget? That's still, that's coming up again, right? Yes. Yeah. They haven't, they haven't sorted out the supplemental budget. Yeah, they haven't. Okay. There's still a chance. So, <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> For the 250000 <laughs> For any money. Uh, any money. Yeah. I do have three very short things. Sure. I just want Go ahead, you guys to be aware of. Yep. Um, Casey probably is aware of this, but I contacted um, Randy Iser at Harold Eaton, and he says that he's going to have a preliminary thing to Casey probably big tomorrow mm -hmm. about the uh, Leary Lot. Leary Lot. Okay. Oh, uh, Tim, fantastic. Uh, Thank you. I spoke again as part of the CCI town campus ad hoc core group with UMass, Ben Wheel, and Maury Madison about specifics to do with the, the church and the basement and the waterproofing and, and finding out what exactly we could get for free services from them. So, um, they've already designed a plan to fix the water infiltration. And um, my, my thought is to try and get some sort of rough estimate of what it would cost to fix that building so it could be utilized for whatever purpose. I mean, all of the work that would go into being a senior center, community center would be the same work that would need to go into it if it was used for something else. So 
if we can get a budget together and then we can go to an uh, underutilized buildings grant application and, and get this building fixed without spending our money, it would be a good thing. And the final thing is that um, Jeff Galley from DA reached out to me this afternoon expressing a desire to try and have the nonprofits meet with myself and um, Lisa Mead Great. or whomever to begin discussing what, what our vision of what we can do with them is. Um, I know that you guys have been doing, the sewer people have been doing preliminary work on that and yeah. trying to come up with the options. And so if that plan is in roughly good shape, I, I, my first step is to reach out to Lisa and figure out what her schedule is and what makes sense based on her advice. Right. So I didn't talk to Jeff. I just got a voice message. So, so we, um, sewer meeting today and, uh, just going over the plant Yep. and, uh, everything's in great shape there. Um, we do need to discuss and it's not on the agenda, so I won't really yeah. talk more about anything about this, but just that, um, we need to talk with Lisa a bit about the change order that we'd like to do because it's a pare down one to keep under the 20%. I just want to make sure that we understood understood from the Attorney General and Lisa that I just want to make sure that that is okay. So I'll, I'll fill you in on, on that stuff at a meeting that, that it's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is, you know, talk about trying to get in touch with this April, um, who was a mass works person and you know just trying to come up with a flush out that plan of what we think is the best option and we'll have several options of how to plan. how to pull money together so right. what what trevor's referring to is utilizing a, a specialist to help us identify funding sources in addition to town funds and um, anything that would come out of the general regional area um, mm -hmm. such as MassWorks grants. And yes. April's familiar with that. So, but before we can talk to her is we've got to have basically um, a checklist of what to tell her so that she can help us get some, help get us some good information. I um, also, I called, just update, I called um, Scott Soares and left some message. She hasn't gotten back to me, oh. but he's the, you know, the director from Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, USDA. So Great. Thank you. I'm hoping that he'll, we can set up a meeting with him, have yep. him invite him out here yep. and um, explain what we're doing and see how all his programs can fit right. with us. There's a ton of money at the state. They can't stuff it into their drawers because they have so much money right now between federal, you but know, we only capital have five gains. Or six weeks. I know they have a ton. Do you have, of by the way, money. do you have Jane um, Pierce's number? By the way, at all? Can you get it for me? I can get one for you. Yeah, because yeah. I'm gonna. She's she had COVID, but she's. I'm, I want to call her and see what she's doing. With oh, okay. Orange Library. Yep. Um, so the idea is to put something together. She has something to talk about because right. I know that they they wanted to have some sort of plan so that they could go to the. Um, right, and we need to decide among uh, ourselves. Amongst, right, what is best. Yeah. So. Right. Before we negotiate with them or sit down and right. talk with them. Yep. So that work is happening. We'll bring it up at another meeting. But mm -hmm. in case I have one thing I was just going to tell you, since you're working on the church, John's already done some preliminary work in terms of getting us an idea of what needs to be fixed on the roof, right. the steeple. Right. So yeah, I was I aware just, of um, you that know, trust. And, and the other thing is that uh, the historic consultant that John brought out here, you know, I, I've I haven't reached out to him because I know John has been in contact yeah. with him, so I'm not duplicating yeah. things. Yeah. But there's uh, there's information so yep. that they don't want to duplicate what we right. might already have. Good. Good. Just while we're talking about the church, I set up one of the, I, we ordered four of those shelving units. I set one of them up the other day, but it was just blistering hot. So we've got to set up the other three and just start moving that, that stuff over and then maybe yeah. partitioning what we need to ditch. Um, but I think four will be pretty good and we can order more, but it'll be in that hallway. It'll be out of everybody's way. And, but we should prepare because by the time, you know, all of a sudden they'll be like, Oh, we're getting ready to start. We I need know. to, we need well, to spend I'll, the time. Yeah. So take I'll, a day off and come over and 
<laughs> hey, you, you want to build the other three tomorrow when it's 97 degrees? Yes, Ken. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll have to find a no. cool day if we can. <laughs> Let's try a rainy, cold day. <laughs> Anything else anybody have before no. we adjourn? Thank you. I just want to thank you both for coming yeah. tonight. Thank you. I, I Thanks for all the work. have been really worried. Yeah, so. well, I'm worried too because it is August and this is, you know, when all of a sudden a hurricane shows up and um, we'd like to be prepared. Right. And we sure. want to be prepared for and ice storms. COVID has consumed us for too long. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you all. Have a good night, everybody. Yes.